I do things in the wrong order sometimes. Well, this block's already been machined for my parts, and doing the next few mods I plan to do now is really doing things in the wrong order. But a change in crankshafts means I might have to repeat some of that work anyway. At any rate, I'm glad that I did it out of order, because I have camera equipment that I don't want to get filthy and greasy, and because everything's already clean and much easier for all of us to see. I guess at one point condensation occurred inside this plastic wrap. It was snowing like crazy when I picked it up, so it's really my fault. It doesn't really matter on rough casts much that it's got a little surface rust, but it sucks on milled surfaces because it leaves the top layer of a freshly decked block discolored by the physical change of rusting. I got here just in time to clean it up, but if it pitted and light sanding didn't completely remove it, I'd have to resurface it again. I'll still have plenty of more opportunities to polish it up. However, in the open air, it will rust faster if you leave it alone, so I'll clean it up with a brand new steel wire brush and some carb cleaner, or a product I'll refer to as carb cleaner anyway. It needs several things done to it first before I'm satisfied to start my final assembly, and all of those things are going to make different kinds of messes. I can control the mess to some degree. Today we're going to do a main oil gallery modification to improve the performance of the oil system. If for some reason you did your machine work first, or if you have a block that doesn't need to be washed out in the machine, I'm going to take this opportunity to show you an easy way to go through extremes to ensure that you don't contaminate your oil system. I'm doubling up the painter's tape to give the block enough protection from abrasion. I just stripped the oil from the head gasket surface to help the tape stick, and it really needs to get re-oiled as soon as possible once I'm finished. But this covers up all of the freshly cleaned bolt holes to keep dust out. Don't get this tape wet because it's not waterproof. On the other side of this thing, my main caps and main girdle need to go so that I can remove the crank and bearings. I have videos about that already, so instead let's talk about what's coming up next after I'm done with the grinding. The GSX's old 7 bolt block was powder coated. It won trophies partially because of this, and it's part of the car's personality. Because it deserves it, and for no other reason, I will be powder coating my 6 bolt block again. It's costly, it insulates the block, and it doesn't resist everything, but it's more resistant to chemicals than paint is, and it looks great on an engine stand. Once you get the block installed and fully dressed, you really can't see it. Paint's perfectly acceptable to use here. You're all very aware of the Gliptol process that's occurring, and it's not a surprise to any of you that it'll also be happening to the block, but what did we do to the head first? We found out that there was a lot of flash inside the crankcase from its casting. We found rough cast surfaces and pieces you could break loose with your fingernail. We found obstructed oil return galleries. We deburred it. The kinds of challenges you encounter with a cast iron block are different, but the tooling isn't much different, and neither is the surface preparation. The block is more opened up and accessible, which is nice because it allows you to use bigger tools, but the flash you encounter on the block behaves completely different than it does on aluminum. While taking this apart, I did find a few things that could have been a problem. There appeared to be assembly lube and oil that got trapped between the bearing shells and the crank bore. Maybe it's my imagination. You really want these surfaces spotlessly clean before installing bearings. Anything that gets trapped between these layers reduces your oil clearance and can contribute to excessive bearing wear or worse. I'm going to wrap up the crank and leave it oily, but everything else needs to come out and that's fine by me because I have to clean all this out anyway. The main studs were also buried in the holes. You might get away with this on some engines, but you're not supposed to do that with a 4G63. You're supposed to bottom them out, then back them out a half to a full turn, and straight edge them to ensure they're all even. That spreads the torque load evenly across the threads and increases their strength and stretch resistance. If you bury the studs, only the ends of the bolts will bite, and it allows for a greater amount of stretch on the length of the stud. Neither of these are a problem for my situation because I needed to take mine apart. But if you don't do your own assembly, these are things that other people might not get right. Many people commented about using a round shank screwdriver, a hammer, or other means of cutting the tape against the sharp edges of the part. That's how I do things with iron and steel, and I love that trick, really. It's one of my favorites. I just won't do it with cast aluminum parts. It's too soft of a material, and there's risk for distorting edges or gouging the surfaces I've probably polished or recently had prepared. It's something I definitely won't do with a cylinder head, and that's why you saw me cutting the tape with a razor knife. I don't have to be very careful with an unfinished cast iron block. It's literally hard as nails. I'm not going to scratch or distort anything. A ball peen hammer is an awesome tool for cutting out the oil gallery if you have one that's the right size. You just press and slide it along the oil gallery and poof, perfect cutouts in seconds. I need access to both main regulated and high pressure oil galleries, so that's the only thing I want to cut out. This is the kind of surface you might find inside your factory oil galleries. The crusty lava rock looking flash is extremely porous because it's mostly impurities. This is what I want gone. 
And I'm going to smooth out the rest of the gallery while I'm at it and slightly increase the size of the areas where oil changes flow direction or has to go around things. I'm also going to contour those areas based on their flow direction. This one is the regulated main oil gallery. Oil makes a sharp 90 degree turn here inside the block. The hump you see going across both galleries is the oil supply for the number one bearing, the rear balance shaft, and your oil pump. Under no circumstances do you want to cut into that gallery on the high pressure side because it trashes your block. But it's perfectly okay if you cut into it on the regulated side. It gets its oil supply from this gallery. Some people even round this entire hump out into the main gallery and deep into the block and I think that's a bit extreme. That's just one guy's opinion here. But some of the pros do it that way so perhaps there's a justifiable benefit from this that I'm unaware of. My reasoning for not doing it is that the front case already has indentions, if you can see it here. It already has indentions around where those humps line up and where the oil turns to go inside the block. My mission is to simply round off the sharp edge inside the block and only increase its size here by about an eighth of an inch wider or so. If you watch my front case video, I explain all the flow directions and rounded off all the rough edges on the front case already. Here I go doing things in the wrong order again. I meant to show you this, so I gotta peel back into this thing. This is the number one main oil gallery. I'm gonna use a shish kebab skewer for this illustration, just because. This is where the number one oil gallery is situated, and I wanna take a measurement to see how deep you can cut these galleries without creating a big headache for yourself. But first, some of you are going to laugh at me here. Your machine shop is not going to do what I'm about to do here. If for some reason you did your machine work first, or you have a block that doesn't need to be washed out and machined, I'm going to show you an easy way to go through extremes to ensure that you don't contaminate your oil system. This is a non-standard procedure, and I'll only waste a minute and a half of your time doing this, but you'll see how effective it is in these situations, and maybe find a practical use for it elsewhere. All I've done here is twisted a few inches of picture hanging wire around a bolt with washers on it that are slightly smaller than the oil gallery. Tightened a nut down on it with a lock washer to keep things secure, and bent this wire in the direction I need it to go. Next I take some silly putty. Yes, silly putty. It has other uses for engine building that we'll get to, but I break off a piece of silly putty, squish it around to warm it up a little, and then roll it around the bolt in the wire. It's doing double duty. I'm going to move this, but I'm leaving the skewer in here to give me a surface to measure the depth against and inserting the silly putty tampon into the block. Then I just place my finger over the hole, pull the string, and the silly putty gets crushed between the washers of my finger to fill not just the main gallery, but the secondary oil gallery is also drilled off of it. Mess with it a bit and get it right. It's going to get filthy, but when you're ready to pull it out, all the junk around where you're working will get cleaned off, much like when you clay bar the body of your car. The silly putty grabs anything it rubs against on its way out. If for some reason you don't clean all of it out when you're done, it's oil soluble. Let's get some depth measurements here. <laughs> Turn it on, zero the gauge, use the depth gauge to the bottom of the, yep. 493, 493 thousandths of an inch. The hole starts almost a half inch into the block. Try the high oil pressure gallery and we get, hmm, 0.191 inches. So just a tad over 3 sixteenths of an inch. That means I have a bit more than 3 sixteenths of an inch to go before getting into the danger zone on this gallery. I don't need to take off anywhere near that much to accomplish my goals. I'm shooting for 125 to 150, or about an eighth of an inch. I'm first going to use a quarter inch carbide burr with a straight shaft air die grinder to remove the flash, rough texture, and to do the bulk of the contour work. But before I get ahead of myself, I need to seal up the rest of the crankcase. I want more than one layer of tape on this block. Just for the record, you don't need anything stuck through the number one oil gallery. Silly Putty works just fine without it. It's not a problem that I already installed the Silly Putty. I can easily work around that. One layer of tape is just not enough to protect anything if I should slip with a carbide burr. Two layers is barely enough, but I'm going to be careful. After hammer time and a pointless shaping of the tape around the edges, because I'm just going to peel this stuff right back off anyway, it's time to finally get to work. Don't oil anything. Use a double cut carbide burr. Mine's tapered with a round tip. Place the straight edge of the bit flat against the oil gallery and make a pass. The burr won't penetrate enough but to shave a tiny bit from the surface. But it cuts through the flash like a knife through warm cream cheese. If you press hard, just, just why would you do that? But, but when you do, it will cut the shape of the tool into the part. So to keep from creating distortion, be aware of your pressure and keep the tool moving. If you linger in one spot or zigzag, you're going to create troughs in the finish. Grind on the axis of flow. When you want to contour shapes into the parts, you just vary your angles and pressure, but still keep the tool moving. You want this to be delicate, but remember that this is the rough cut. Don't spend all day with this. You also want to be deliberate. Give your compressor a break once in a while. 
especially if it's smaller than a 30 gallon because your air supply won't keep up with the tool and you'll burn out your compressor. Mine's a 45 gallon so I have no problem there but I still let it charge all the way up and cool off every 10 or 15 minutes. Next I'm hitting it with sandpaper rolls. This isn't really necessary. At this point you've removed the obstructions that would create turbulence and improved the shape of the transitions that were already there to begin with while increasing the gallery's internal volume. You could call it quits here, but you know me better than that. I want a more gradual and rounded taper at the main oil gallery than you can achieve with a carbide burr, only because I want it. I start off with a cylinder shaped roll because they have harder edges and larger radius at the tip. This makes them a little bit more aggressive than the tapered rolls for shaping things, but because of their hardness and larger radius, they don't reach into corners very well. That's when you switch to the tapered rolls. They have a finer tip, and because they're thinner, they're also softer. You can aggressively smooth the radius corners of the galleries and the transitions inside the block with the tip of this, and with the tapered edge, contour the areas around the number one gallery hump while putting an even smoother finish on it. Again, this is overkill on the finish, but I want to cut evenly down to the bottom of the rough cast. I don't dig deep into the block where the number one gallery is because I'm from the school of thought that says that too much of a good thing is a bad thing. A larger hole makes air and liquids flow slower. This can be beneficial for creating a pressure drop, but too big and suddenly you have turbulence. I don't want an unevenly shaped gallery or to possibly change the flow direction across the number one main oil gallery hole by placing it directly inside that turbulence. I just want to create a slight low pressure zone just behind the opening of the bore to help pull the oil in by rolling in the sharp 90 gradually, about an eighth of an inch away from the number one hole, and lowering the height of the humps in the oil gallery. It lets the oil make a gradual turn into the block and doesn't decrease the oil level in the pan by much. Please take my own reasons as opinion. Based on how air flows, this makes the most sense to me. A large unevenly shaped cavity here would create turbulence, so I'm taking the edge off, rounding the transition, and keeping it close to the same diameter of the original gallery. I have no scientific test results to support my flow theory, it's just my opinion. I'm sure plenty of you will also have one in the comments, and I welcome that. Just look at all those places on the tape where I slipped. My I'm gonna be careful. Sure glad I put that tape on there. The reason I said this should be done when you first disassemble the block is because you still have a gasket on the block after you remove the front case. You just cut out the galleries and go to work. You're going to wash it out anyway. I didn't have that gasket and my block's already been washed out, so I did this to it anyway. I'm not finished messing with this block, or even making messes in general. I would feel confident enough in the cleanliness of these methods to put the engine right back in use without putting it through a parts washer, except that I have plenty more to do this thing that will require it. If any of you have performed this modification, which I know some of you have, please share your thoughts on the subject. What oil filter housing did you use? What other oil system modifications did you make? What kind of gauge are you using? What kinds of behavior do you see in your oil delivery? I'll be installing an oil pressure gauge on both the block and the head when this is all over so we can see exactly how my oil system is behaving. But meanwhile, I'd like to hear from you guys who've already done this one too. In the description, there's a link to a thread about this that was posted by someone whom I believe has a greater understanding of a 4G oil system than anyone else on DSM tuners. It's because of what he contributes to the community, both professionally and in his spare time to post stuff like that, that I have it. Because these things get posted, everyone in the community has it. Go give that guy some reputation points. You won't catch him doing things in the wrong order or breaking out the silly putty like I'm doing here. He says he feels this modification is beneficial for even a stock rebuild, and I agree with him. He'll show you a better order to do things in that doesn't require any of this preparation. Follow his advice. But before you go, click that like button and spread the word. The GSX is getting some love. This is what my finished product looks like. There's one more thing I wanted to show you. Initially I did this view to see if I left anything in the oil gallery, but I was a little bit surprised about what I found. Apparently the main oil gallery is drilled through from opposite sides of the block, meaning that involves making two holes meet with precision in the middle. It looks like two different drill bits were used two different times throughout the block, and that makes three ridges inside the oil gallery. The biggest one is where two bores intersect. It looks slightly offset. That would create a restriction. In theory, it should create fluid pressure behind it and reduce flow in front of it from turbulence. Being that I lost number three and four rod bearings on my seven bolt, it makes me curious as to whether or not it could be a contributor to many of the other DSMs that failed that way. I might be unwrapping the seven bolt from curiosity just to see if it's any different. But for now, I'm not doing anything with this at all as I'm currently unaware of it being a problem. Perhaps it's intentional. I just found it interesting. 
I'd never heard about this anywhere else and don't know how many people have bothered to look inside of this. But as always, I'm grateful for your time. I hope all of you got something useful from this. Don't forget to comment, like, favorite, subscribe, and check the description for links to more information on this topic.